Former governor of New Jersey Christine Todd Whitman says she'll not only refuse to vote for him, she'll probably cross the aisle and pull the lever for Secretary Clinton. Thank you so much for being here, Governor. You know what words keep running through my mind this week and the last couple of weeks? You reap what you sow. If people aren't satisfied within the GOP with what has become of the party under Donald Trump's quote-unquote leadership, frankly, they have the party and themselves to blame. Don't you agree? I do. I absolutely do. Well, not only did the party not take Donald Trump seriously, way back when, when he started the birther thing, they embraced it. I mean, they, they didn't say no. They didn't move away from him. And unfortunately, frankly, both political parties have been focusing on this, this split. We can't talk to the other. If I don't agree with you, you're my enemy. And this has been so divisive. This is what's made people absolutely furious at the status quo because nothing gets done because people won't talk to one another and we've been moving to the extreme in both parties and and that's just wrong it's bad for the country it's bad for policy we haven't gotten good policy out and people are furious now if it ends in a train wreck and maybe it ends in a president trump but if it ends in a train wreck for the party who picks up the pieces the people are the ones who are going to have to decide that. You don't know who's going to emerge. I mean, I, I've, to my mind, we have some very qualified candidates. I would love to see a Kasich-Rubio ticket putting both Ohio and Florida in play, and that gives you someone who has been shown an experience in working together and across the aisles, balancing budgets at the federal level and at the state level, taking a state that was $18 billion in debt and giving it a surplus. Um, then you have the new face of the party, a fresh young face who doesn't have executive experience enough yet, I believe, to be the president of the United States. We don't want more on-the-job training, and we don't need to look further than that. We have the solution, and we have the team that I believe can beat Hillary Clinton in the fall. But as you and I know, Governor, the problem is that passion rules the day. I, I'm a firm believer in those numbers that show that 42 percent of Americans really are I's. They're not R's. They're not D's. They're I's. Right. And they want to be and they want to be represented. But unfortunately, passion rests on the fringe. And so I keep hoping that there's solace, some comfort in the fact that this will be the cycle that will awaken the middle. Am I wrong? No, I'm with you 100 percent. I believe, frankly, the majority of the American people are in that center. Right now, what you have is, as you say, passion rules, and you have a very passionate group that says, I'm sick to death and I'm not going to take it anymore. And the way they, the one thing I will give both the Trump campaign and the uh, Sanders campaign is they've finally gotten people to recognize the way to make change in our democracy is through the ballot box, because up till now, people haven't been voting. I mean, when you look at, we think we've done a bang up job when we just get over 53, 54 percent in the presidential race and the average until this year voter turnout in primaries was 10 percent. I mean, the message you're sending to the people in office is either we don't care, we think you're doing a fine job. And that was not clearly what any poll said the public thought about our representatives in Washington. And yet people weren't using the ballot box. Now they are. But I hope before this is over, a little sense of balance comes back into play and that those that are in the center realize you've had just had a discussion about how this could play out and that it's not over yet. And yet so many in the media want to say it's over. It's Donald Trump no matter what. No, there's still a possibility for a different ticket to emerge from the convention in Cleveland. OK, and well, people let me, ought let me... to remember that. Let me ask you about an even more different ticket. There's a report today that Michael Bloomberg, within the last 30 or so days, has moved his private email away from his business and more toward an independent server, perhaps a precursor that he really does get into this thing. Would you like to see Michael Bloomberg become a presidential candidate? I doubt he'll do it, frankly. I mean, I respect the job he did in New York, but he has always been pretty pragmatic about what a New York billionaire could do and how they and his polls just aren't showing him that. And my feeling is if it's Hillary Clinton on the Democrat side, and it certainly seems that that's going to that she is going to be their candidate. I don't think you're going to see him run. In New Jersey, in the Garden State, six newspapers this week all published a joint editorial saying that one of your successors, Chris Christie, should resign. As a matter of fact, the New Hampshire union leader said, quote, unquote, boy, were we wrong. Do you think Governor Christie should resign? No, they're calling for his resignation based really on his on what he did during the campaign, the amount of time he was out of the state, which to my mind was very unfortunate and unfair to the state of New Jersey and his constituents and his endorsement of Trump. He's now back in the state. He's now focusing on the job of governor. And as long as he stays on that, there's no reason for him to resign. Uh, you can call for that and you can be mad at how much money we've spent on all the various problems that have gone on since he hasn't been managing on a day-to-day -day basis. But that's different, and that's showing up in his poll numbers, which are, I think, his approval is, is even a little bit below 30 percent. 
but it's not a reason for him to resign. He can still be governor of the state of New Jersey as long as he focuses on the state of New Jersey. Final question. The Star Ledger said that he was gone 72 percent of the days in 2015. Should he have run for reelection if he knew he'd be running for president and he'd spend all that time out of the state? Oh, my philosophy is always do is to do the job you were elected to do and the rest will take care of itself. Uh, New Jersey is the strongest governor constitutionally, or one of the strongest of the 50 states. You really need to be there. It's a hands-on job. Yes, uh, the Internet gives you ability to communicate that we haven't seen in the past, but that's not the same thing as sitting down in a room to work through these major issues that we face face-to-face -face with the people who need to make these, need to be with you to make the decisions. Governor, nice to see you. I hope you're right that this is a cycle that awakens the center. Thank you for that. Well, fingers crossed.